Yo, man, you already know it's Strap ENT for entertainment purposes only. We go coast to coast like butt and toast. If you ain't know, now you know. And I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove. Bastard. Did what I'm saying. I'm on my get rich, not trying for it. It came from the bottom, so I need every cent. 20. All right, so we got Strap off the porch with us today, man. How you feeling today, bro? I'm feeling good, man. You know, I woke up today, so, you know, I can't complain. God is good. There you go, man. Yeah, appreciate you coming by today, too, man. For sure. Yeah. What else have you been working on here in Atlanta, man? Oh, uh, man, some music stuff, a couple of interviews. Um, I was in the studio last night working on a project uh, with one of my artists, uh, Coach. He actually coming from the airport right now, so. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's, That's dope. <laughs> so just out here working, man. Hmm? You just out here working, huh? Yeah, for sure. For okay. Sure. All right, so how's your 2021 starting off, man? Man, it's starting off real good. We off to a good start. I'm a... Um, 2021 free agent, NFL free agent this year. So we just trying to see what teams have to offer so I can rock out of it. Okay. Got any predictions for the Super Bowl next week? I'm going to just say this. You can't you can't go against Tom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, he, he, he do his thing. You know, he live, he lit. But, you know, Tom, he done did it too many times before. So yeah, you know, it's just up in the air with that. Do you think there's any type of uh, home field advantage for the Bucks playing at home? Because a lot of people are debating, you know, since it's a Super Bowl, there's really not too much of a home field advantage. Uh, honestly, I just think they're going to they gonna let them boys play. You know, it's going to be a showdown. You know, the battle of the arms and then the, whichever defense can stop who the most. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Sure. All right. So what can you tell us about growing up in Belle Glade, Florida, man? Yeah, it's rough. You know, it ain't, ain't too much to do out there. Um, it's probably like nine restaurants on one street. Ain't no movies, like no movie theaters. It's pretty much just physical activities like basketball, football, you know what I'm saying? Kids out there chasing rabbits here and there. You got um, track stars. So it ain't it ain't a lot to do in Bear Glade. You know, it's either like you you playing sports or you going to school, getting your grades, or you know, you in the streets for real. Yeah. Did you start off playing sports uh, at a at a young age? Yeah, I started playing football at five. Five? Okay. Yeah. So when did you realize, hey man, I'm pretty good at this and this is what I can actually do and make a living off of it too? Shit, yeah, I'll say, you know, when, you, when, when, when your people come to the game, you know, cause my pops, he, he used to go out there, they used to cook fish, you know, crabs for the, for the you know, the families out there and everything like that. So, you know, when, um, when you start to create that, that crowd as a young kid, like, well, People want to come out and see you play. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's when I start to realize, like, okay, shit. Like, yeah, I'm nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you always play defensive back too? No, nah, I started off on the offense side. I was running back. I played running back, quarterback, and receiver. Okay. Yeah, they starting off. Yeah, usually the best athletes start off, they throw them at quarterback. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, when you're young too, they try to put you on the line and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we weren't having that though. <laughs> <laughs> so when'd you make that switch over to the, the defensive side then? In high school, high school, my junior year, junior year high school. Okay. Yeah, I, I switched over to corner, and then my senior year, my last year in high school, I switched to safety. Okay. Yeah. Did you embrace that change? Absolutely. Yeah. I had a lot of interceptions. <laughs> 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 and you went to FAU, right? Yeah. Okay. Right in the backyard. Yeah. So what was that experience like going to school so close to back at home? I mean, it got it. It got it. Pro, it's pros and cons. You know, it's right in the backyard, close to home. My family can come see me. My friends who support me. You know, uh, home cooked meals. You can never get tired of those. And I just say the. I mean, the cons. It, it really ain't no no cons for real. I mean, you still. The only con is like I ain't go nowhere. Like I was still in Florida. You know, you want to go to college. You want to venture out. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You want to go out the state. You know, go places you ain't never being or see shit you ain't never seen. Yeah. Did going undrafted deter you at all or did it make you want to go even harder? It definitely had a, brought a, a chip on my shoulder because, you know, the guys who, everybody who got picked before me, like, you know what I'm saying? I definitely thought, like, I, you know, I was better than some of the guys, most of them, in my opinion. But, you know, shit, it ain't about how you get there. You know what I'm saying? It's about what you do when you get there. You know, and I'm going on year six now, so I've been rocking out. There you go. Yeah. So when you got that first chance, man, how did that feel to play in your first NFL game? Yeah, a lot of butterflies, you know, a lot of excitement. I was a little nervous at first, but, you know, once you get like that first couple of plays out of the way, 
you kind of settle down, you know, and at that at that point, it's just you playing football again. Like, you know what I'm saying, saying a lot. So you just go out there and do your thing. You yeah. Know? You have a most memorable uh, memory from the NFL so far? It'll have to be, it'll have to be the pick off of Drew Brees in the playoffs in 2018, second round division, or the first round, 2018, beating the Chicago Bears, the team who released me. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's always good to get revenge on, you know, a team that released you. So I, def- I, I go with the Drew Brees, though. That was yeah. a highlight moment. That was like one of the first plays of the game, wasn't yeah, it? First yeah, first play. He first tried. Play. <laughs> Made him pay for it, you know what I'm mean? saying? Teach him a lesson early, Got right? Got early. <laughs> what would you say has been one of the biggest life lessons you learned in your life so far? Uh, just never get too high on your high horse. You know, stay humble. You know what I'm saying? Understand and know that what God got for you is for you. You know, never get too big, never get too low. And always remember to just be grateful for what he put in front of you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people will get success and take off to the, you know, he'll put them on the elevator, take them to the penthouse, and then all of a sudden you just forget you know what I'm saying, who, who brought you here, you know what I'm saying, you ain't do this on your own, it's just one by mistake, you know, we all got a purpose in life that we have to fulfill, you know what I'm saying, so I just feel like that was a, a big life learning lesson for me, you know what I'm saying, because I was definitely cocky and confident at the same time, you know, when you that teenager, you smelling yourself, you good, mm-hmm. they can't really fuck with you on the field and stuff like that, so, <laughs> man, shit, I just say, Stay, stay, stay on your pivot. Don't, don't lose sight of it, man. Cause he got a funny way of bringing you to your knees. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm, I'm a prime example of that. I done been brought to my knees before. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't shy away from praying to the Most High. Yeah, yeah, that's real, man. So when did this uh, music journey for you start? How long have you been making music now? Yeah, I always, you know, had bars or at least thought I had some. You know, when I started out. <laughs> Um, in college um, with some of my teammates and stuff like that. And just the things I was going through in life, mentally, f- physically, and spiritually, it was a, I just used music for a therapeutic method for me to get through whatever I was going through at the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And eventually as time went on for like, I want to say me taking rapping serious was probably two years ago. You know what I'm saying? Where well, I actually started like, like, okay, yeah, you kind of sound good. You can do this, like, you know what I'm saying? So, and then just hearing my older brother too, you know, he, he locked up right now, he incarcerated. And uh, he be giving me a lot of good um, feedback and stuff. So, you know, he, he got a real good ear for music. You know what I'm saying? So I, be, I was letting him hear some of my latest stuff. And then he was like, yeah, boy, yeah, you need to go on ahead and tighten up. Bitch. You need to go ahead and do your thing. So ever since then, I just been rocking with it. Okay. You know. Who'd you grow up listening to? Tupac, Biggie, you know, uh, Drake, Wayne, Fabulous, Nas, you know, and then just the newer generation, younger generation, Lil Baby, The Baby, Lil Top, I mean, uh, NBA, Young Boy, uh, No Cap, Future, Me, you know, them type of guys. There you go. So uh, when you started taking this serious a couple of years ago, were people taking you serious though? They're like, man, you, you play ball. I mean, you know, it's always gonna be like that, like, when you first start rapping and you play sports, like it's always, oh, he a football player who just wanna rap. Like he ain't really, he can't really rap. Like, you know what I'm saying? But that's not the case in my case. Like I'm really talking something, about something, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I got my own style, my own flow, my own melodies, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really feel like I sound like too much of nobody in the industry. You know what I'm saying? I probably am similar, but I wouldn't say I sound like him. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other players in the NFL that be rapping, that be making music? Yeah, um, my homeboy Bezo, he do his thing. Uh, I know Le'Veon, Le'Veon Okay, Bell. yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, he be rapping and stuff like that too. I know uh, AB tried it out too. Yeah, AB, AB tried, <laughs> AB do it, you know. And I think, I think I want to say Keenan Allen, like do something with the singing or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Can he sing? Yeah, I mean, he nice, <laughs> he dope. You know, he, he a LA dude, you know what I'm saying? So he got a different type of flow. Yeah. <laughs> So what's your thoughts on the rap game and how does that compare to, you know, the NFL industry? I mean, it's definitely two different type of industries. You know what I'm saying? In the NFL, it's a lot of politics. 
that go into it, you know, and I'm pretty sure it's the same thing on, on the ind industry side of it. You know, you just gotta understand and know what lane you wanna be in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What room you wanna be in, what artists you wanna be in the room with. Yeah. What do your teammates think of your music? They fuck with it. Yeah. They fuck with it. They be like, yo, it's it. they support me, you know what I'm saying? And the ones who support me, I support them whether, you know, whatever they doing. <clears throat> So, you know, uh, I definitely, every every time I let somebody hear my song, or whether it's a teammate, family member, or whatever, or whatnot, I just tell them, keep it real with me. Like, tell me what you what you, what you you hear on it. You know what I'm saying? I don't shy away from, from constructive criticism. I play football. You know what I'm saying? So I, I love being critiqued. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever I do or want to do in life, whether it's football, rapping, or whatever, like, I'm going in 110 miles per hour. Like, yeah, I'm trying to. Bitch. <laughs> I'm done, yeah, I'm trying to take off. Yeah, being you know an athlete, that's probably all you know is all in or nothing. All in, yeah. You just go hundred. Yeah. Zero to hundred. How do you balance the two? Does it get difficult? Um not really. I you know I, I look at it as, you know, football is my dream and rapping is something I like to do that's therapeutic for me. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like you can't put a cap on either one of them. Yeah. You know, football is football. When it's time to play football, you know, I go, I go from having OTAs in April all the way to mid-June. Then I got another time off, probably like a month, before I go to training camp. And then you got training camp late July. And then from late July all the way to, if you go to the Super Bowl, February. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that, that it all depends on the season, you know what I'm saying? But after the season over, when you hit the off season, it's just like music. Music okay. and rest time, get your body right, treatment and all that, so. Yeah, that's what's up. Do you write or do you freestyle and punch in? I write. Okay. Yeah. But I, I can't come up with, you know what I'm saying, some freestyle punch lines that'd be like, oh shit, that's hard. <laughs> I gotta write him down. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to us about this label you started, Strap Entertainment. Yeah, so Strap NT. Stay true, remember anything possible, man. I earned the name Strap when I, my rookie year, I was in New England. And uh, you know how it is when you're a rookie, shit, you, you coming from the bottom, you gotta work your way up. So coming from third string, I worked my way up all the way to like first string, rotating in with the first string. And uh, it was one day at practice where, you know, Malcolm Butler had picked off Tom and, you know, it was all competitive and then, I came back and double off and picked off Tom and Jamie Collins was like, boy, them boys out there strapping and scrapping shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I ended up just taking it and running with it and it just turning it into my own type of meaning on what it mean to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I never been fed with a silver spoon, never, nothing never been given to me. Everything I got, I earned, you know, um, shit. And like, shit, I'm a strapper. Like I'm gonna fight for what's mine. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I want it, I'm gonna go get it. If I see it, and I believe in it and I got faith that I can do it, I'm going to do that. That's just what it is. That's what a strap is, you know what I'm saying? So me getting into the whole label thing, my brother, you know, he he served 25 years right now to life right now. Um, oh, wow. Uh, he, he already did 11 years, you know what I'm saying? And he a felon. So you know how it is when felons come home, you know, they don't really have, you know, a platform or something that they can come home and do but revert back to what they was doing. They get shut down from everything, jobs, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So for me, you know, being, you know, my brother's keeper, I, you know, when he come out, I want him to have something to come home to, like, you know what I'm saying? Because he, he the real artist, like, he, the, he, you know, he got an ear for the music and, you know, shit, he, he vibrated for real, you know? So if I can help him get to what he need to be in life too, when he jump or just have it already set for him, you know? So. I'm shit, I'm just working for both of us. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is, for real. Yeah, that's real. Salute to you for that, man. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any other artists on the label, or is it just you? Nah, I got two other artists. Uh, Cold and uh, Payday. Okay. Yeah, Pace to Pay. How'd you link up with them? Uh, pay, Pace to Pay, he a hood, um, childhood friend. You know what I'm saying? Who I grew up with, you know, in and out of jail. And, um, uh, he just stayed loyal, you know, we stayed in touch, stayed in contact, and, you know, I think he, he went up the road and did five years, and he was seeing me in newspapers and, you know, on the TV screen, and we would keep in touch, and when he got out, like, you know, you know, once a friendship, a friendship, a bond, what you build with your dog, you know what I'm saying, you don't switch up on that person just because what they go through in life, so when he came home, like, we just, you know what I'm saying, been like that ever since then. I asked him, like, man, what you trying to do? What you want to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? He like, shit, I'm trying to rap. Like, you know what I'm saying? So 
Yeah, I support my dog. Yeah. Has it been easy learning the, the music business? Uh, I'm definitely learning. You know what I'm saying? You can learn every day. It's always something to, new to learn. You know, shit. I ain't been doing it for ever, so yeah. it's definitely, you know, I can learn a lot. Do you have any mentors or anyone you can turn to for advice? Yeah, man, I got my manager, Juice. You okay. know, he uh, connected in real well. You know, a lot of people give a lot of great advice. And uh, we just, he'll call me. I'll call him and we'll just chop it up, politic. You know what I'm saying? Converse about what we're going from here step by step, you know what I'm saying, and just lay it out. Yeah. All right, talk to us about this new single, man, Rock and Roll. Yeah, so Rock and Roll, man, it, we, I went and shot that single at my agent house, you know what I'm saying? Oh, really? You know what I'm saying? It was a nice crib. house, man. Yeah, nice crib. He ain't, <laughs> yeah, he ain't pull shit. And he always had his 4th of July party going on or whatever, whatnot, where he invite his clients, you know what I'm saying, that's his clientele to come up and we just party or whatever. But being that it was COVID, uh, it didn't really happen last year. So we, you know, we went in the way I took the family and stuff. We got away, it was a little mini vacation, you know what I'm saying? So shit, it's like, shit, might as well do the song up there. You know what I'm saying? Knock out two birds with one stone. You know, the song was already pinned in the song, already sound good. I had got it mixed and mastered. And it was just all about putting the visuals together for it. Okay. And went up there, did that and came up with some fire shit. Yeah. yeah. How's the feedback been so far? It's been good. You know, you definitely gonna have the trolls. You know that's gonna happen for sure. We ain't really stuck in them, worrying about none of them. You know, that's what it is. You know, everybody ain't gonna like your music. Everybody ain't gonna like your style. Everybody ain't gonna, you know, it is what it is on that tip. But the ones who do fuck with it and like it, like they'll comment on it and be like, hey, well, that's hard, that's fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? Keep doing what you're doing. Can't wait for more music, this and that and third. You know, I got another single coming out. Uh, in February, uh, called Desires. So okay. they really fuck with that heavy. The ladies do. What are you rapping about on Desire? Man, a whole lot of shit. Like dripping, up, dripping her in designer. You know, shit. Being in your city, like being in a different city where I ain't from, on a flyer. You know what I'm saying? Telling her like, the name another nigga who flyer. Like you know, it's just a whole bunch of stuff going on. It's a real dope song though. So it's dropping in February? Yeah. Okay. You got a video already shot for it? Mm -mm. That's the next thing I'm working on. Okay. You working on a new project? Yeah, I'm working on the singles right now. So okay. after um, I, I drop rolling, uh, Rock and Roll, and then I just, I'm going to drop Desires, and then I'm going to drop one more single after that, and then I'm going to be working on my EP project. Okay. Yeah. Any other producers been working with besides Juice? Um. Juice, TNT, TNT okay. XD. He did rock and roll, right? Yeah, he did rock and roll. You yeah. know, I be vibing with bro. Me and him tapped in a lot. And mainly shit, them, them the only two for, so far. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Beto. Yeah. Okay. And you also got your own merch, right? Strap for it? Come on, uh, strap for it dot shop, man. You can go get that. And it's on IG2 at Strap Merch. You can go get that. Up, the link is in my bio. You know what I'm saying? You can click the link and go to the website and purchase hoodies, shirts, long sleeves, you know. Um, I'm working on some more, um, I'm working on some more jeans, some more clothing line and stuff like that too, some new, some new shit. Okay. Yeah. You design it yourself or do you have someone helping you? Um, majority of them I design myself and then some of them I do have help. Like I can design something and then, you know, my guy Matt will come call me and say, well, I've been thinking about this or, I, what you think how this look you know so i look at it and if it's dope like i go with it if it ain't then like we just communicate like, yeah. i don't like that i don't like that let's do this other than that you know it's just that communication level gotcha yeah i see you're big on giving back too man talk to us about your foundation yeah so the craven leblanc foundation mission is to help impact and empower the youth through socialism skills academics um leadership development in hopes of just breaking the poverty chain, you know what I'm saying, and overcoming financial and social uh, challenges. Yeah. You know, I got two spectrums: uh, Save Heart Foundation and Save uh, Second Chance Program. And both of them, I dedicated to the Second Chance Program. I dedicated to my brother, just because you know I don't feel like one mistake should earn nobody a life sentence. That's that. And then the other one I dedicated to my father. I watched him die in front of my eyes when I was 15 to, due to a massive heart attack. So, oh, wow. 
I'm big on that. So I just do a lot of mentoring, a lot of giving back. You know what I'm saying? I always knew I wanted to do that, you know, so that's big on my part and that's just big for me as a person. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Were any of those type of programs available when you were growing up? No, nah, not really. You know, <clears throat> most most programs growing up that I seen was just all like sport related. Mm -hmm. You know, so like if you wanted to go to a seven on seven or a camp, you know, that was at Florida that was called Friday Night Lights or the Tiger Camp that was at LSU, you know what I'm saying? So other than that, I don't really think it was like no community, like communications or just somebody just coming back to the hood and giving back like that. The only person I really, I know for sure, for sure, for sure, these three, these two people, um, Anquan Bolden and uh, Fred Taylor. Okay. You know, they always come back and do their thing, always come back and give back. Travis Benjamin and Deontay too, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Salute to you for that, man. That's noble of you, man. All right, Strap, what else are you working on, man? What else is coming up for the new year? <sighs> man, really, really this music, trying to get this off the ground. I got a YouTube channel as, as well. Strap underscore ENT, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, it just for me, man, it's just I'm, I'm just trying to enhance everything at this point. You know, everything that I've started and got off the ground, you know, I, my, my whole goal was not to just start it and get out the ground and crank it up, but like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to crank it up and get it moving, like, you know what I'm saying? Into a right direction, a positive, right, positive direction too as well. So, you know, that's with football, life, music, et cetera. Yeah. All right, any shout outs before we wrap it up? Yeah, man. Free my brother, shout out Craig, you know what I'm saying? Hold your head up while you coming home. You know, uh, I definitely wanna give a shout out to, you know, all the members of Strap ENT who've been holding it down, the support system, my team, they do a lot for me, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what I, where I'd be without them. First and foremost, I wanna uh, thank Juice for, you know, managing me, you feel me, getting me into, you know, putting me into the right, type of situations I need to be, you know what I'm saying, connecting me with the right people. Uh, also too, I just want to shout out everybody too who really just fuck with the music, off the love, off the strength, just, you know what I'm saying, just because, you know, shit. And yeah, you know, I'm Strap NT, y'all can follow me on uh, IG, Twitter, TikTok, you know, it's Strap underscore ENT for all panels. You know, Mama Strap, that's my baby. You know, she do her thing. She pop her shit on.